The EuroLeague's best two players are now in the NBA and nobody knows what to expect. Sasha Vizhenkov was the EuroLeague MVP last season and Darren Fox said he's one of the best shooters in the world. So Kings fans are hoping he can be the missing piece that makes them championship contenders. Vasily Micic won two championships and MVP in 2021. He's now in OKC and Thunder fans are tipping him to be the sick man of the year and a veteran presence that can help take them to the next level. Neither Sasha nor Micic have ever played in the NBA. Will they be stars, will they be role players or will they be busts? What does history tell us? We already talked about Micic and Sasha in more detail in these videos, but what about other EuroLeague MVPs? Let's look at every EuroLeague MVP that played in the NBA and let's find out who succeeded and who failed. Let's start with the obvious one. You might have heard of him. Luka Doncic. At just 19 years old, before he was even old enough to be drafted, Luka Doncic was already the best player outside the NBA. In the 2017-18 season, he was MVP of the EuroLeague, an insane accomplishment considering his age. And that season was historic. He averaged 16 points, 4.9 rebounds and 4.3 assists. And he won everything individually and collectively. Just look at these accomplishments. EuroLeague MVP, youngest in history, EuroLeague Final Four MVP, EuroLeague Rising Star for the second year in a row, and of course, Euroleague champion with Real Madrid. This same season, Luca was also MVP, Rookie of the Year and champion of the Spanish Liga ACB. Yet somehow, despite all of what he accomplished, there were doubts in the States. Luka Doncic was passed up on not once, not twice, but three times in the 2018 NBA Draft. He was selected third overall by the Hawks and then traded to Dallas, where he became one of the best rookies in NBA history. Luka averaged 21.2 points, 7.8 rebounds and 6 assists per game in his first year with the Mavs. He won Rookie of the Year and probably should have been an All-Star. Since then, he's been an All-Star and All-NBA player every year since. He's averaged 27, 8 and 8 in the regular season, 33, 9 and 8 in the playoffs and he's led Dallas to the conference finals. At just 24 years old, Luka Doncic is already a future Hall of Famer. And I don't think any Hoops fan in Europe or America will disagree with that prediction. That being said, Luca is an anomaly. What about the others? Moving on to one of the greatest passers in basketball history. No, I'm not talking about Magic Johnson who did briefly play in Europe. I'm talking about Mios Teodosic. Now if you think that's a crazy take, then just watch the highlights. Teodosic first started making waves in the EuroLeague after joining Olympiacos in 2007. His best season individually was his MVP year. In 2010, Teodosic averaged 13.4 points, 4.9 assists, 2.5 rebounds and 1.8 steals per game. He led Olympiacos to the Final Four, where they lost to the eventual world champions Barcelona. More on that later and also in this recent upload. In 2011, Teodosic left one Euroleague giant for another, signing a three-year deal with Seska Moscow. During his first season, Teodosic led the Russian powerhouse to the Euroleague final. Standing in his way was his former club, and in an all-time classic that went down to the wire, I'll let you watch what happened. In 2016, Seska had one of their strongest teams. Teodosic formed a formidable 1-2 punch alongside EuroLeague MVP Nando Tocolo. Spoiler alert, another player in this video. Teodosic had one of the best seasons of his career. He averaged a career-high 16.1 points, 5.7 assists and 2.7 rebounds, leading Seska Moscow back to the EuroLeague Championship game. And this time, after dropping 19 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds and 2 steals in the final, Mios Teodosic was finally a EuroLeague champion. Teodosic played one more year in the EuroLeague and averaged even better stats, leading the EuroLeague in assists with 7 a game. But after another Final Four defeat, at 30 years old, Teodosic took a leap of faith and joined the Los Angeles Clippers in the NBA. Teodosic was brought over to be Chris Paul's replacement, an idea that was pitched to and approved of by Blake Griffin in his free agency pitch. Teodosic was one of the most highly anticipated Euro NBA signings of all time. However, things for him in the NBA 
didn't quite go to plan. The Clippers traded Blake Griffin just months after signing his extension, and this made Tia Dosic expendable. After all, he was brought in to play the pick and roll and keep Lob City alive. His first season up till that point was promising. He averaged 9.5 points and 4.6 assists per game. He hit the 3 at a high clip and was pretty efficient overall. However, things quickly went left after some injury issues. And after playing just 15 games in his sophomore season, Tia Dosic was waived by the Clippers. In a later interview, Mios Tia Dosic admitted that he left it too late to join the NBA. He was 30 years old when he signed and at that age, having played a certain way your entire life, is a hard adjustment to make. I do think had Tia Dosic joined the NBA earlier, he could have had a Ricky Rubio type NBA career. But Tia Dosic still had a lot to offer the game of basketball after leaving the NBA. He joined Balonga in the Italian league, and for 3 years he was the best player in the Euro Cup. He was MVP back to back years from 2021 to 2022, and also won the Euro Cup championship where he was finals MVP. In 2023, he still plays professionally in Serbia. Tia Dosic may have failed in the NBA, but he's a Euroleague legend, who won MVPs and championships both domestically and in Europe. He also has three medals with the Serbian national team, at the World Cup, Olympics and Eurobasket. He's had an incredible career in pro basketball, and will leave behind a legacy in Europe that won't be forgotten anytime soon. Next up is 6'10 Serbian forward Nemanja Belicia, a player who was drafted 35th by the Wizards in 2010, but was stashed in Europe and didn't play in the NBA until 2015. After an impressive season with ACB club Basconia in 2013, Belicia was tempted by NBA interest, but instead signed with Fenerbahce to play under the Phil Jackson of Europe, who won 9 Euroleague championships as a coach. At Fernabashe, Belicia became one of the best players in the Euroleague and in 2015, after leading Fernabashe to the final four for the first time in club history, Belicia was MVP of the Euroleague after averaging 15 points, 9 rebounds and 3 assists per game. They lost in the semi-final to Real Madrid and that would be the end of Belicia in the Euroleague for now as he signed with the Minnesota Timberwolves summer of 2015. Belicia spent 3 years with the Timberwolves and had some impressive performances. He had 24 points against the Lakers, 30 points against the Celtics. He was a bench player who played around 20 minutes a night. His best years in the NBA individually were with the Sacramento Kings. He was a starter for 2 seasons and in the 2019-20 season, Belicia averaged 11.5 points, 6.4 rebounds, 2.8 assists and 1.9 steals. He shot 48% from the field and 42% from free. In 2021 he was beginning to exit his prime and was traded to the Miami Heat, where he played briefly before signing with the Warriors in 2021. Belicia was a role player for Golden State in 2021-22. He featured for around 20 minutes a night, averaged 6.1 points, 4.1 rebounds and 2.2 assists. His ability to move off the ball, be effective in pick and pop situations and stretch the floor as a 5 made him an undercover weapon for Steve Kerr's offense. The Golden State Warriors won the championship that year, so Belicia had a ring to show for his time in the NBA. He has since returned to Fenerbahce and is now a veteran well past his prime at 35 years old. Belicia spent 7 years in the NBA, and while he was a well respected role player, he was never able to be the player he was individually in Europe at the NBA level. Even still, with a Euroleague MVP and NBA championship title under his belt, Belicia has had a basketball career that many would be proud of. But they weren't the only Euroleague MVPs who played in the NBA, so let's look at the others. The most recent Euroleague MVP to play in the NBA is Nikola Mirotic. Now his case is a unique one. He spent 8 years with Real Madrid before joining the league in 2014. At Madrid he was the Euroleague rising star back to back years in 2011 and 2012, and in his final season in Spain, Miritic was the best player in the Liga ACB, winning the MVP and ACB championship in 2013. He even led Real Madrid to the final four in the championship game in 2014, but lost to Maccabee Tel Aviv 98-86. This game would be Miritic's final in Euroleague, and he joined the Chicago Bulls in 2014. Miritic spent 4 years with the Bulls and developed into a nice NBA player. In 4 seasons in Chicago, he averaged 11.4 points and 5.4 rebounds. In his final season with the Bulls, Miritic became one of the most effective bench players in the league. 
averaging 16.8 points per game and shooting an incredible 43% from the perimeter. However, following a physical altercation in practice with Bobby Portis that left Miritic looking like this, he was traded to the Pelicans. Miritic's two years in New Orleans were some of the most productive in his career. When Boogie Cousins went down with a season-ending injury, Miritic stepped into the starting lineup and changed the Pelicans season. He had some huge performances towards the end of the regular season, and in the first round of the playoffs against the Trailblazers, Miritic was a difference maker. His versatility at the forward positions made him a nightmare matchup, and he scored a career-high 30 points in Game 3 of the Pelicans' famous sweep over Dame and the Blazers. Miritic averaged 15-9 and nine during the 2018 postseason, and was credited for saving the Pelican season. The next season with the Pelicans, Miritic continued to impress, averaging 16.7 points per game and 8.7 rebounds. However, New Orleans' season was overshadowed by the Anthony Davis trade saga, and Miritic was shipped out to Milwaukee at the trade deadline. Miritic wasn't happy during his few months in Milwaukee. He was desperate for a bigger role and some stability in his life. What happened next was crazy. When Miritic, despite being offered a three-year deal worth $45 million from the Jazz, stunned the basketball world by returning to Europe and joining Barcelona. Nikola Miritic was arguably the biggest Euroleague signing since Dominique Wilkins. And since returning, he has been one of the best players in Europe. At Barca, Miritic won two ECB championships, and after averaging 19.5 points and 5.7 rebounds per game, he was MVP of the Euroleague. He's done everything in Europe except win the Euroleague championship, as in 2022 for the second time in his career, Miritic lost in the championship game, this time to Vasily Micic, Shane Larkin and Anadolu Efes. Nikola Miritic left Barcelona this summer to join Olympia Milano, and at 32 years old, time is running out for him to win the Euroleague. It's now or never. Overall, Nikola Miritic is possibly the most interesting case on this list. He was a capable starter in the NBA, a desirable asset for any playoff team. He could have stayed and had a long, successful career in the NBA, but instead chose to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond that he was more comfortable with. Let me know down below in the comments, how do you think Nikola Miritic's career would have played out if he stayed in the NBA? Next up on the list is Jan Vesely, an NBA bust who was drafted 6th overall by the Wizards in 2011. Jan was a highly regarded prospect at Partizan leading up to the 2011 draft. He was compared to the legendary Dirk Nowitzki and famously claimed to be the second coming of Blake Griffin. With one of the brightest young backcourts in the NBA, the Wizards hoped that Jan Vesely could be the missing piece in the frontcourt, an idea that crashed and burned. Vesely's best season in the NBA was his rookie year, and even that was disappointing, because if you average 4.7 points and 4.4 rebounds in your best season, you're not going to last very long in the NBA. After a disappointing rookie season, Wizards fans hoped that he just needed time to adapt to the American game. A coping mechanism for the fact they picked him over future Hall of Famers, Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler and Kawhi Leonard. Vesely didn't progress in his sophomore season, he actually regressed. The next two seasons, he averaged these stats and was shipped out to Denver at the trade deadline. He played just 21 games with the Nuggets, averaged 4.4 points per game, and that would be the last of him in the NBA. So why did Jan fail in the NBA? A lot of it was mental. He was scared of the free throw line, and no wonder, he shot 40% there for his career. This led to him not being aggressive and refusing to attack the basket. He made zero threes in four NBA seasons. He attempted only two. So he had absolutely nothing going for him offensively. He was too scared to drive and too scared to shoot. And as time passed, he lost faith in his abilities. And before he knew it, he was out of the NBA. But Jan Vesely didn't let his time in the NBA define him. After leaving the Nuggets, he joined Fenerbahce in 2014. He played alongside Nemanja Belicia and under the Phil Jackson of Euroleague. It was here in Turkey that Jan Vesely revived his basketball career. And when Belicia left for the NBA, Vesely became a star and by 2016, he was first team all Euroleague. In 2017, Vesely was a starter on one of the most stacked Fernabashi teams in history. They had Bogdan Bogdanovic, Kostas Slauskis, and even former number one pick, Anthony Bennett. Fernabashi won the Euroleague championship. Vesely was first team all Euroleague again. But his best season individually was in 2019. 
Vesely had put in a lot of work and transformed himself from one of the worst to one of the best free throw shooters in Euroleague. He averaged 17.6 points per game and shot 60% from the field. Stats that won him Euroleague MVP. They lost in the final four that year, not just to anyone, but Turkish rivals Anadolu Efes, a very sore loss for Fenerbahce fans. Jan Vesely now plays for Barcelona, and I think he's just another example of a basketball player that's better suited to the FIBA game than NBA game. I have to say, going from FIBA European Young Player of the Year to an NBA bust to MVP of Euroleague is quite a career arc. Moving on to French guard Nando De Colo, the all-time leading scorer in European continental competitions, who has played everywhere in his career. He's played in the Spanish League, the French League, G League, NBA, Russian League, Turkish League, and also with the French national team. After winning the French League MVP, De Colo was drafted with the 53rd pick in 2009. He was stashed in Europe until 2012, and after winning the Euro Cup title with Valencia, he joined the Spurs in 2012 and was a part of the team that lost to Miami in the 2013 NBA Finals. That summer, De Colo won Eurobasket with the French national team. De Colo played two years in the NBA. He was a backup who in two seasons with the Spurs averaged four points in around 13 minutes a game. He was traded to the Raptors at the trade deadline in 2014, the same year the Spurs would go on to win the NBA championship. There was a big debate at the time as to whether or not De Colo deserved a ring. He only played 26 games and started three with the Spurs that season. What do you guys think? Is De Colo an NBA champion or not? Tell me down below in the comments. During his two NBA seasons, De Colo had multiple G League assignments and never had a consistent role with any team. So at the end of the season, he returned to Europe, joining Seska Moscow. During his five years in Russia, De Colo won five Russian League championships and made the final four of Euroleague four times. His best season individually was 2016. He averaged 19.4 points, five assists and 3.6 rebounds per game. He was the Euroleague's leading scorer, Euroleague MVP and final four MVP, leading Moscow to the championship title. In 2019, De Colo was still a key player for Seska. And after defeating Anadolu FS in the championship game, Nando De Colo became a two-time Euroleague champion. In 2019, Nando De Colo joined Fenerbahce. He won a Turkish Cup in 2020 and Turkish Championship in 2022. He has since returned to France and plays with Asvel, a French club owned by former teammate Tony Parker. De Colo is well past his prime now, but is still a standout player in the French league. He's had a heck of a career, he's won on the European stage for club and country, and is widely considered one of the greatest scorers in European basketball history. Next up on the list, we have arguably the greatest player in Euroleague history. He's been compared to Kobe, T-Mac and Steve Nash. He is the idol of Luka Doncic and Yanis Antetokounmpo. We're talking about Vasilius Spinosis. The man who famously scored 22 points in a win over Team USA at the 2006 FIBA World Cup, and also won Eurobasket with Greece in 2005. These incredible performances at FIBA put Spinosis on NBA radar, and he joined the Houston Rockets in 2007. To say Spinosis failed in the NBA would be an understatement. He averaged 2.9 points, played under 9 minutes a game and shot terrible from the field in 3 point line. Spinosis hated his time in the NBA and clashed with head coach Jeff Van Gundy from day one after being told he'd ride the bench for most of his rookie season. After a frustrating year in Houston, Spinosis was traded to the San Antonio Spurs as head coach Greg Popovich believed in his talent and potential. Spinosis would never play for the Spurs and immediately requested to be released by the team so he could return to Europe. In 2007, he rejoined Panathinaikos, spent another three years in Athens before making the controversial move in 2010 to join their bitter rivals Olympiakos. Spinoza's time at Panathinaikos was successful. He won MVPs, Greek Championships and even the Euroleague Championship in 2009. However, at Olympiakos, he took his game to all-time great heights. Spinosis dominated Euroleague for the next decade. He won it all again and again in Greece, and after winning Final Four MVP and his second Euroleague Championship in 2012, he followed that up with his best ever season the next year. 
In 2013, Spinosis averaged 12 points, 4.6 assists and 2 rebounds per game. He was MVP of the EuroLeague, top scorer in the EuroLeague, top assister in the EuroLeague, EuroLeague Final Four MVP, EuroLeague Final Four top scorer, all of this en route to winning back-to-back -back EuroLeague championships. Spinosis won everything individually and collectively in Europe. His accomplishments are too long to list in this video, but perhaps his most impressive was becoming the all-time leading scorer in EuroLeague with this famous basket. Guarded by Williams, Rubik, down low. Spinosis drains the three and there goes the record. It becomes the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague all-time leading scorer. Speaking of famous baskets, how about this shot to win the Greek League Finals against his former team in 2016? Vasilius Spinosis was inducted into the EuroLeague Hall of Fame in 2022 and has since started a career in coaching. And with a basketball mind like his, it wouldn't surprise me to see him go on to win it all all over again, this go around coaching from the bench. Next up on the list we have a Real Madrid legend who is still going strong to this day. To this day! To this day! Sergio Rodriguez, who at 37 years old just played 18 minutes in Real Madrid's recent win over Luca in the Dallas Mavericks. Sergio Rodriguez started his career in Spain and after winning the Liga ACB Rising Star Award, Rodriguez was drafted by the Phoenix Suns in 2006. Rodriguez was traded to the Portland Trailblazers, who he joined that same year. In the NBA, Rodriguez was a backup, playing second fiddle to Jarrett Jack and Steve Blake. In Portland, he got to play alongside Spaniard Rudy Fernandez, another Madrid legend who he won countless titles playing alongside. Sergio Rodriguez never saw eye to eye with head coach Nate McMillan, who always favoured the American players and even stated that Rodriguez was too young and undeveloped to play in the NBA. In three seasons with the Blazers, Rodriguez averaged under 13 minutes and 3.6 points per game. He never got much of an opportunity, starting just 14 of a possible 219 games. In 2009, Rodriguez was traded to the Kings. He played 39 games in Sacramento before being traded to the New York Knicks at the trade deadline that same season. For the 2009-10 season, he averaged 6 points and 3.1 assists, but he wasn't happy with his role in the NBA. In summer 2010, he joined Real Madrid. Sergio Rodriguez's first stint in Madrid was the prime of his career. In 2014, he and Rudy Fernandez were both first team all Euroleague, and after averaging 14 points, 4.9 assists and 1.2 rebounds, Rodriguez was voted MVP of the Euroleague. They fell short in the final four in 2014, but the next season, Real Madrid won it all. They won the Spanish Cup, they swept Barcelona 3-0 in the ACB finals, and defeated Olympiacos in the Euroleague final. Summer 2015, Sergio Rodriguez was back with the Spanish national team for Eurobasket and added a gold medal with Spain to his treble with Madrid. In 2016, Sergio Rodriguez returned to the NBA, joining the Philadelphia 76ers. Despite having his best NBA season, averaging 7.8 points and 5.1 assists per game, the Sixers were in their process years. They were terrible. Rodriguez was a winning player and he wanted to win, so he returned to the EuroLeague and signed with Seska Moscow. Rodriguez continued his winning ways in Russia. In two seasons between 2017 and 2019, he won two Russian League championships, made the EuroLeague all-second team, and was a key player for Seska in the 2019 season. That year, he won his second EuroLeague championship. That summer, Rodriguez wanted a new challenge and joined Olympia Milano in the Italian League. The same club Nikola Mirotic joined this summer. In Italy, he won a Super Cup, an Italian LBA championship, before returning to Real Madrid in 2022. Sergio Rodriguez is 37 years old, but he isn't done winning just yet, as in 2022, Real Madrid won the EuroLeague championship again, defeating Sasha Vizhenkov and Olympiacos, courtesy of this iconic shot from Sergio Lul. Yuri, working against Faust, beats him with the dribble, pulls up at the elbow, Sergio Rodriguez is a winner, three EuroLeague championships speak for itself. Although he wasn't a success in the NBA, 
I think like Rudy Fernandez and a Barcelona legend that we're about to talk about, had Rodriguez stayed in the NBA and been given more of an opportunity, he could have made something for himself across the pond. Moving on to the Euroleague MVP who maybe had the best NBA career, besides him of course, and that's Andrea Kirilenko aka AK47. He had a nice balance of successful European and NBA career. After becoming the youngest player to ever play in the Russian league, AK-47 was drafted 24th by the Utah Jazz in 1999, becoming the youngest foreign player to ever be drafted. Until 2001, he played for Seska Moscow, won the Russian Super League Championship, made the All-Star Game and even participated in the dunk contest. He joined the Jazz in 2001, and when Karl Malone went down with injury, he stepped into the starting lineup and scored 27 points against the Pistons. AK-47 made the all-rookie first team and averaged 10.7 points and 4.9 rebounds per game his rookie season. His best season in the NBA was 2004. After John Stockton and Karl Malone left the team, Andrea Kirilenko became the face of the franchise, and he had a historically great season ranking top 5 in steals and blocks. Only David Robinson had ever done that before. AK-47 was an all-star, finished top 5 in Defensive Player of the Year and Most Improved Player Voting. He led the Jazz in points, rebounds, blocks, steals and three pointers made. Andrea Kirilenko did all of this in his early 20s. He was one of the best young players in the NBA. Between 2004 and 2006, he was one of the NBA's leading shot blockers, averaging over three per game. He made three All-NBA defensive selections and was first team All-Defense in 2006. His most iconic NBA moment came against Kobe in the Lakers in 2006. Kirilenko had 14 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, 7 blocks and 6 steals one of the few 5x5 performances in NBA history and only Hakeem Olajuwon ever had a 5x6. AK-47's prime was short. After taking on a lesser role in 2007, he had career lows in points. But that doesn't mean he was washed, because at Eurobasket in 2007, Kirilenko was MVP of the tournament and led Russia to the gold medal. I'll show you how the final ended. And Jarrah Holden penetrates. Puts it up. He makes it. Yes. It comes to Gasol. He puts it up. Oh! It almost went in. Russia has stunned the world champion. After winning the gold medal at Eurobasket, Kirilenko asked to be released from the Jazz so he could return to Europe. He ended up staying with the Jazz until 2011. He was still good, but his heart wasn't in it. And in 2011, he finally got his wish and returned to Seska Moscow. AK-47's second stint in Moscow was his most successful. He averaged 14.1 points, 7.5 rebounds, and won the Russian League Championship domestically. In the Euroleague, he was Defensive Player of the Year and Most Valuable Player in the same season. Kirilenko led Seska Moscow to the championship game. They were seconds away from winning the championship, and then this happened. After heartbreaking the Euroleague final, AK-47 returned to the NBA, signing with the Timberwolves. He spent a year in Minnesota, put up some solid numbers, and then joined the Nets for what would be his final NBA chapter, but by this point he was well past his prime. Andrea Kirilenko's last dance in pro hoops was exactly where you'd expect it to be, back home in Russia with Seska Moscow. That season, Seska Moscow won the title in Russia again, but in the final four of Euroleague, suffered another heartbreaking loss courtesy of Olympiakos and this iconic Spinosis moment. Spinosis from deep! Oh! He hits it! Vasily Spinosis does it again! The long shot misses by Kirilenko! That there was the last game of Andrea Kirilenko's basketball career. Overall, I'd describe AK-47 as a player well ahead of his time. While he never won an NBA Defensive Player of the Year award, he was most definitely the most versatile defender. He could truly guard 1-5 positions. 
Offensively, he was an underutilised playmaker, which again would have been a skill better suited for today's game. I think Andrea Kirilenko is one of the most underrated European players in history. He was an MVP at the two highest levels of European basketball and had a solid NBA career with several notable accomplishments. He is though, like Nikola Mertic and Sasha Vizhenkov, one of the greatest players to never win the Euroleague. We've talked about legends from Fenerbahce, Real Madrid and Cesco Moscow. How about a Barcelona legend? Juan Carlos Navarro, a guy who played over 20 years at Barca and briefly in the NBA. Navarro had two decade long stints in Catalonia, each as successful as the other. After emerging as one of the best young players in Europe, Navarro was drafted in the second round by the Wizards in 2002. He would stay in Europe until 2007. In that time period he won 4 ACB championships and in 2003 was a part of the Barca team that won the Triple Crown, winning the ACB, Spanish Cup and Euroleague Championship in the same season. In 2006, Navarro was MVP of the ACB and a key player for the Spanish national team, who defeated Spinosis in Greece in the final of the FIBA World Cup. Navarro scored 20 points in the championship game. Summer 2007, Navarro's draft rights were traded to the Memphis Grizzlies, and after some convincing from longtime teammate Pau Gasol, Navarro took a leap of faith and headed to the NBA. He had a successful rookie season, averaging 11 points per game off the bench. He shot 40% from the field and 36% from free. Performances that earned Navarro all rookie first team honours. That summer, Spain narrowly lost to the Redeem team in the final of the 2008 Olympics. Despite losing, Navarro scored 18 points in the gold medal game. The Grizzlies wanted to keep him. He was clearly good enough to stay in the NBA, but Navarro was homesick. The language barrier was also an issue for him and he wanted to return home. So home he went. Navarro was bought out of his NBA contract for 10 million euros and returned to Barcelona. And his first season back in Europe was arguably his best. He averaged 14.8 points per game and won the only Euroleague MVP of his career. That season, Barca lost in the final four to Cesca Moscow but they bounced back the following season and Navarro had the most successful 12 months of his basketball career. He started the summer off with a gold medal at Eurobasket in 2009, and although Navarro wasn't Euroleague MVP, he was MVP when it mattered. He averaged 15.7 points, was MVP of the Final Four, Final Four top scorer and won his second Euroleague championship. He even famously outscored Kobe Bryant when Barcelona defeated the NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers in an unofficial World Championship game. The 2009-10 Barcelona team was one of the best in European history, and Navarro was the star of that team. Navarro never won another Euroleague championship, but he was MVP of Eurobasket in 2011 after scoring 27 points in the championship game, leading Spain to back-to-back -to -back Eurobasket titles. At the 2012 Olympics, Navarro would have to settle for a silver medal again, falling short to USA in the final for a second time running. Navarro continued to play for Barca until 2018. He finished his career with 8 Liga ACB titles, 7 Spanish Cups, 5 Super Cups, 2 Euroleague Championships, 2 Eurobasket titles, a World Cup and countless other individual accolades. He set records that have since been surpassed such as the Euroleague's all-time leading scorer. Navarro is truly one of the most underrated basketball players of all time. He's a guy that could have had a long NBA career. Instead, he became a Euroleague legend and is arguably the greatest player in Barcelona's history. And last but not least, we have the greatest American in Euroleague history, Anthony Parker, the 21st pick in the 1997 draft who went on to make history, just not in the NBA. After struggling to break through in three NBA seasons, averaging these underwhelming stats, Parker decided to take his talents overseas in 2000, joining Israeli club Maccabib Tel Aviv. In his first season in 2001, Parker won the equivalent of the Euroleague at that time. He was an instant success in Europe and won everything domestically a few times over. In 2003, he left Tel Aviv to play in Rome, a stint that didn't last long as a few months later, he was back playing for Maccabi Tel Aviv. His second stint was even more successful than his first, 
Maccabi had three of their best seasons in club history, winning triple crowns back to back years in 2004 and 5. Anthony Parker was the heart of this success. In 2004, he averaged 16 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. He was the leading scorer in Euroleague and MVP of the finals while bringing the Euroleague title to Tel Aviv. The next season, Parker was even better. He averaged 18 points per game, 5.3 rebounds, 3.6 assists, and a career high 2 steals. He was MVP of the Euroleague and Maccabi won the championship a second year in a row. In 2006, a historic three-peat was on the cards. Parker was MVP of the Euroleague again, this time averaging a career high in rebounds and assists. They made it back to the final four, and in the championship game, with a three-peat on the line, this happened. Allá va Parker, no creo que lo dejen levantar, bueno es igual, Parker, no va. A moment in history that almost was, and also Parker's last ever Euroleague game. He returned to the NBA in 2007, signing with the Toronto Raptors, a signing that was made because of this shot in a preseason game between the two teams. On a post up against Peterson, five seconds left in regulation. Parker, baseline right, fall away, got it! With eight tenths of a second to go! Parker returned to the NBA a new player. Over three years in Toronto, he put up impressive numbers, averaging 11.9 points, 4 rebounds and 2.6 assists. Stats that if you put side by side with his three NBA seasons earlier, you can see the difference is night and day. And after shooting 42% from three with the Raptors, Parker gained a reputation as one of the best shooters in the NBA. Anthony Parker also played in three playoff series after returning to the NBA, twice with the Raptors and again with the Cavaliers who he joined in 2009. In Cleveland, Parker got to play alongside two of the greatest ever, LeBron James and Shaquille O'Neal. He was an important player for the Cavs, starting in almost all of his games during his three years. In 2009, the Cavs won 61 games. They were the best team in the league. However, we all know how that season ended. That famous meltdown to the Celtics that LeBron stands watching will hate to be reminded of. Parker stayed with the Cavs until 2012, and although they were the worst NBA team, he was a part of that famous game when the Cavaliers upset LeBron in the Big Three. Parker played a big part in that win, with 20 points and 8 rebounds. Overall, Anthony Parker had quite the career. He got a taste of glory being a Euroleague superstar winning MVPs and championships. He was also a first round pick, played alongside and again some of the best to ever do it, was a part of some iconic playoff series and important parts of NBA history. It all worked out for him in the end, and it wouldn't have happened without Maccabib Tel Aviv. Anthony Parker's legacy there is cemented. He remains the only player to have won multiple Euroleague MVPs and is widely recognised as the greatest American to ever do it in Europe. And that brings us full circle. After hearing the stories and careers of every Euroleague MVP to play in the NBA, what do you think will happen for those next in line? Will Sasha Vizhenkov and Vasily Micic succeed in the NBA? Or will they end up back in the Euroleague? Let me hear your predictions down below in the comments, subscribe to the channel if new around, and like the video to show your support. And on that note, it's DKM signing out until next time, and peace.